Hey FlossTube, welcome to Creative Room Studio. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining me today. Last week I told you how good of a gift giver Kevin is, and so I wanted to share with you one of the shirts he got me for my birthday, Van Gogh Starry Night. And I have to tell you, I have matching socks. Let me show you. He got me the socks for Christmas. They're clean. It's not smell of vision so you're good. But look how cute. Aren't they awesome? <laughs> So like, it's all about art today. Not really. This is a channel about cross stitching and punch needle and any other creative things that I can think of to share with you. And also just about my life and what I do day to day. So this past week was crazy. I didn't get a lot of stitching time in. We were gone all day Wednesday, to Ann Arbor, Kevin and I, and on our way back, we stopped at some friends' house that kind of live out that way. So that was really nice to visit with them. And Thursday, we had the grandkids. And then last night, I, it's kind of funny. I went to my mom's, her and I played cards. I took Teeny with me. So we had the two dogs, my mom and I. And then Jerry went to Kyle's house and Ryan went and Kevin went and they played pool. So they had a guy's night so that was pretty cool so I haven't had a lot of stitching time at night but I did make some progress so I will share that with you soon what else oh so while we were in Ann Arbor we went to Dixboro general store and it's it's like a little suburb I guess you would say north of Ann Arbor and so Kevin and I were talking about Dixboro and he asked me he says so how did that story go again like how you know when was this that you met them and so here's the story I might have shared it with you here on floss tube I'm not sure if I did I apologize but I'm sharing it again so this was probably I would say 1992 maybe 1992 in the fall probably or around Christmas time my friend Jan and I were we were at a craft show in Dixboro area, you know, Ann Arbor area. I can't remember the name of the place. It was this big, huge facility, and it was a huge show. And I had painted these old world Santas. If I someday, if I can find one of them or photos of them, I will share them with you. But I know I have them in a photo album somewhere. But they were very Victorian style and very watercolor looking. I mean, they were in watercolor, but a little bit more loose than what I paint now. And they were, you know, matted and framed. And anyways, this gentleman came in to my booth and he purchased one for his wife for Christmas. And he said, by any chance, do you wholesale your artwork? <laughs> and I probably looked at him like he had three heads and I was like, wholesale, you know, what, what is that? And he said, well, because it was busy. And so he said, after the show, why don't you come to my wife in my store down the road? It's called Dixborough General Store. And this was before GPS and everything. So we're talking, well, like I said, it was probably 1991 or 92. So after the show, we packed our things up and we went, oh, I forgot my rings. Sorry. Squirrel and earrings. Jeez. So we went to Dick's Pearl General Store after our show and they explained what wholesaling was. So basically they were saying, you know, you sell them for, let's say I was selling it for $20. I mean, these were original paintings, but I was just getting started. So I just wanted to sell stuff. <laughs> so <clears throat> they said, basically, you might want to start charging $40 for them. And then if you sell, a, like a store would buy several of them, like between five, 10, maybe more, and you would sell them to the store at half that price. So if it's, if I'm selling it at a craft show for $40, I would charge a store $20. So that's how that was born. So I 
they placed an order with me and I fulfilled that order and I started thinking, wow, this would be great to be able to go to stores and sell in bulk like that rather than schlepping my stuff to every craft show I can think of in the area, <laughs> you know, because it's a lot of work. And craft shows, there's a lot of other vendors. There's a ton of people there. Sales, you know, were never like through the roof type of thing. So I th wanted something a little bit more reliable maybe and steady. So I started, I kind of quit the craft show scene and I started going to stores in my area. You know, mid-Michigan, I went as far as like Owasso, which was probably 45 minutes to an hour. There was a time and country out there. Some in Millington. I mean, there was some back in the day when there was a lot of those super cool country stores with handmade items and just ugh, amazing. So I was doing that. And at that time, my dad was off work. This was by, when I was really heavy into doing that. Kyle had been born and he was born March of 1993 so that kind of you know gives you an idea and my dad was off work because he was recovering from uh, prostate cancer and he was hanging out with Kyle and watching him while I would go and do you know deliver my goods or take orders or whatever I was doing to all these stores I was like my own sales rep basically <laughs> So I did that. Well, one time I happened to be at Time in the Country in Owasso, Michigan, and that store is no longer there, which is unfortunate because it was amazing. The, the owners of the store were super nice. But I happened to go out there before calling first, you know, just showing up, which is actually a good thing. The ladies that were working there said, oh, I'm sorry, but the, the owners of the shop are on a buying spree and they'll be gone for about a week. So, you know, come back in a, in a week or so. And I said, a buying spree, what is that? Now, curiosity is a good thing because if I would not have been curious, I would have just went home and I would have come back a week later and maybe maybe I would have asked them at that time, where were you, what's this buying spree? But anyways, I asked the ladies that day, I said, so the owners are on a buying spree, what is that all about? And they said, well, they go to Market Square out in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania and there's a, another one in Fort Washington, which is a cash and carry show. And they go out there twice a year and they purchase things for the shop. And I'm like, my eyes were like really big and I'm like, really? And I'm thinking in my head, that's what I need to be doing. So I waited about a week. I went back out. The owners were so sweet and gracious and gave me all of the information, contact information. You know, this was before we had computers in our homes. We didn't have smartphones. We didn't have any of that stuff. So it was all, you know, done by mail. I had to mail in photos of my work and, you know, it's a juried show. And anyways, they, you know, helped me get into that show by giving me all that information. And then I went home and talked to Kevin about it. And we're like, yeah, let's do it. So we, there's a lot more stories that I want to share with you guys, but that's basically the gist of it. That, so that started my primitive folk company where uh, Kevin and I, you know, we hand painted the frames and framed everything ourselves and, and under glass. And they were a little five by five, five by sevens. We had some eight by tens and then we had some 11 by 14s and maybe two 16 by 20s because those were hard to ship. But anyways, that was the start of Primitive Folk. And then, you know, Primitive Folk led me into art licensing and art licensing is where I discovered Punch Needle and then Punch Needle led me into Cross Stitch. So it's just interesting how that whole thing went. But so I went, we went to Dixboro, my old stomping grounds, and uh, come to find out Cheryl Allen who started that store had sold it about 14 years ago so that tells you how long it's been since I've been to that shop and uh, it was just interesting to be in that store again and it's in an old house and it was an old general store and all the floors were creaky and it was just it was neat to be back there all right so I did get some stitching done and I started a new punch needle so let me share that with you so Needle and Flax is something that I'm releasing at market in March. You might see some people stitching it now. And the reason is because we hit a milestone in my Patreon group. So for one week, they could download this for free. 
And then after that week, I deleted it from my Patreon. So it's no longer available for anybody until it comes out at market in March. So last week I had all of this part done and her shirt. So what I did this week was I worked on her dress and the basket. And I love that color of gold. I love it. But she's coming along really nice. I love it. I love that fill-in. I outlined her dress and then I was watching, I think it was Virgin River, and I was just stitching away, stitching to my heart's content. It was awesome. So moving right along on that, if I would have had, you know, the other three nights to stitch or the other two nights to stitch, I would have got a lot more done, but maybe this week. Actually not this week. That's right. So Wednesday, Kristen is coming in. I know I mentioned that a while back, but she had strep throat, so she ended up not coming in when she was originally supposed to come. So three weeks later, here we are. She is coming in because she was supposed to be here for New Year's and for my birthday. That's right. But anyway, she's all better now, and she's coming in this Wednesday. So Wednesday through Sunday, Kristen will be here. So that's going to be awesome. And then punch needle. I love this design. This is going to be super prim colors, but I love it. So this is the whole design. And I just punched that this morning. That tells you how fast punch needle is. But look at the front. I'm probably going to have to lighten it because there we go. So if I hold it like that, what I'll do is when I actually edit the video, I'll zoom in on that. Because if I bring it close, it goes dark. See how dark that is? But yeah, super prim colors, and I love it. I love this one. I've been doing great with Whimsy 365. I have kept up every single day. I do a sketch and I'm doing some really fun ones that have to do with cross stitching or needlework or sewing or whatever. And I'm like, number one, I want to paint them all. And then I also want to chart them all and I want to punch them all. <laughs> oh, and do all the things. <laughs> all right, so that's gonna lead me into your finishes, I had some lovely ladies send in their work, so I forgot to get it out of the printer. I'll be right back. The sun is out today, you guys. It is fabulous. I feel like so energized. It's been gloomy, misty kind of rain, some snow flurries here and there, and just gloomy. Like at four o'clock, you feel like it's eight or nine o'clock. It's just, it was ridiculous. So I'm so happy to see the sun out today. First, we have Kathy Krause. She stitched Green Santa, Green Coat Santa. And let's see, she stitched him on 46 count. 46 count. <laughs> she didn't say what the fabric was, but she finished him into a pillow and he's so cute. I love that. Thank you, Kathy. Then we have Margot McIntosh. I'm going to go ahead and read what she said. Hi, Teresa. A few months ago, I sent you a picture of a panel that I wanted to know if it was yours or not. I found it in an antique mall of all places. You said it was from a line from a long time ago, I think. You said it was Wintertime Friends line. Anyway, I thought you might like to see what I did with it. The person who bought it originally must have washed it and not blocked it out, so it's a little wonky. See, now, I don't think it's wonky. I think it's adorable. <laughs> I think she did an amazing job. She's explaining what's wrong with it, but I'm not going to read that because if I don't, you won't know just by looking at it. She said, it's hanging in my kitchen for the season, waiting for my husband to put a shelf above the spot to display some antiques with a couple of your cross-stitch projects I'm nearly done with. Just love it. I'm loving your fabric lines. and Yes, Wintertime Friends was with South Sea Imports. So we're talking, oh my goodness, probably 15 years ago. So thank you for sending that in. I love it, Margo. Next we have Lorraine. She sent in a couple of finishes. She says, I love your Christmas designs the most. Stu Snowman was stitched a year ago, but finally finished as a tiny quilt this month using the called Ford threads. Oh, what a sight was also stitched last year, but finally finished this month as well. 
also using the called for threads. Thank you for your wonderful designs. Thank you, Lorraine, for sending that in. I love that Stu Snowman, how she finished that. That is precious. Cute pillow, too. Very nice. Thank you, thank you. Next, we have Audrey. That green coat Santa, he's pretty popular, isn't he? <laughs> Audrey sent in green coat Santa. She said, I used the called for DMC on antique lace by Seraphim Linen. Framed it in a frame from the clearance section at Hobby Lobby. Thanks for the lovely design. Thank you, Audrey, for sending that in. I love that gold frame. looks so cool. It really pulls out the gold in that cross-stitch design. In that fabric, Antique Lace by Seraphim. Mm, I might have to get some of that. Look at that modeling on it. Very nice. Thank you, Audrey. So thanks, ladies, for sending those projects in. If you have finished one of my designs and would like me to share it here in my floss tube, just send an email to Teresa Koga at G Teresa Koga 3 at gmail.com. All right, last week we had for sale Winter Blessings was on sale all week. I think the sale ended today. So this week what we are going to have on sale, 20% off, is Love Lives Here. Yay! Love Lives Here. So here's two designs that are in this book. And I will do my best to show the other designs. The Love Lives Here one at the bottom is my favorite. Oh, if I had to pick a favorite on that page, probably that top one. Our Whimsy Home. I love that one. The ginormous flowers that look like, the centers kind of look like strawberries. Oh, I like that big bird too. These are great for spring and summer stitching. So 20% off this book so you can get a head start on some of those designs. Ooh, and I love this kind of red, white, and blue. Without screaming Americana, it's still red, white, and blue. Love that. So we have Quilter's Home, Tweet House, and then this one is Salt Box. I love that. I love having a sale. I love it. You guys, you know, why not share that with you guys? A little discount. Who doesn't like a discount, right? I have been missing this. I worked, I framed two pieces, but I can't show you because... One is for market and one is for something special that I'm doing with Teresa Bennett. Anyways, I framed these two pieces. So where I do my framing, I took my water thing over there and forgot about it. And I have searched high and low. I thought I left it at my mom and Jerry's on Sunday when we were over there playing cards. So I was over there last night playing cards with mom and I asked her if she had it and she didn't. I'm like, ah, I gotta find this thing. So anyway, I found it today over there where I do my framing. Jeez. All right, one more thing, and then I'm going to just talk about quick plans, and I'm going to go. I want to talk about downloading PDFs from Etsy. We get probably an email, or not an email, an Etsy message at least one or two a day from people that don't know how to download the email, they don't know, you know where to find it, that whole thing, or... Maybe they find it and they can't download it. I don't know what that's all about. But anyway, I just want to go over this with you. So on my listings for my PDFs, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to come around and show you. Whoa. Okay, so here is one of my listings for a PDF. If you look over here, see where I'm at with my cursor? You go right here, instant download. Your files will be available to download once payment is confirmed. This is on every single one of my listings. It says, here's how. Click on here's how. And it takes you to this page right here. How to download a digital item. Digital items you purchased can be viewed and downloaded from the purchases and reviews section of your Etsy account. And then it goes into more detail if you can't find it. And then it says, I can't find my download notification email. Where can I find my digital purchases? There's more detail. Uh, I purchased a digital item, but I don't have an Etsy account. So I'm having trouble downloading my files. 
all of these things are there to help you find, not only find your digital download, but also how to do it. So I, but I just wanted to go over that because y'all, I get a ton. I know that I said this my last floss tube, but it's the God's honest truth. I get tons of emails a day, Etsy messages. I get a bunch every day. I get Patreon messages every day. I have so many different things that I have to burn out, put out these little fires everywhere. And it's very time consuming. So I'm just, I'm trying to <laughs> help. I want to help people, but I want people to help themselves type of thing too. And, and try to figure it out on, our, on their own. And I know there are obviously situations where there's glitches in the system and maybe they never received the download, stuff like that. I mean, I know that stuff happens, but I just wanted to go over this quickly just so that you know, whenever you go, I, and it's not just me, I'm sure other people that sell digital downloads on Etsy have the same issue. So this is helping them too, hopefully. <laughs> but anyways, all of my PDF downloads, that little here's how, click on that. It's right in the listing, you can't miss it. And that would just save me some time from answering these questions. So anyways, just wanted to go over that because I know people get worried when they don't see, you know, the thing that they purchased. I totally get that. I totally get it. And so hopefully that will help. Okay. My plans for the week. Well, like I said, Kristen's coming on Wednesday. So I'll be, you know, a short work week, just Monday, Tuesday, and I don't know what time she's even coming Wednesday. I think it's in the afternoon, so I'll get some stuff done in the morning. One of the things that I have to do is I got my second set of strike-offs. I'll just kind of flash them up here real quick of the Kringle fabric line from Riley Blake Designs. So basically what a strike-off is, like, so this is my second set of strike-offs. So the first set, I go through them and I make notes and then they send my notes back to the manufacturer who makes the fabric and then they adjust and they reprint and then they send a second set of strike-offs. So for instance, here is the red of the main piece. There'll be like an A and a B. So I compare A and B together. I pick out which one I like the best. And then I also compare it to my notes and see if they made the changes that I like and if, if I think the color is good. Hopefully, but I think we've only had to do a third strike off once in a while, like maybe on a couple patterns. But most of the time after the second strike offs, we, we can nail it. So that's nice. So anyways, there's the green one uh, here. So what's nice for me is getting these small little pieces way ahead of time, obviously because this doesn't come out, I don't think it comes out until April, but I can use these for finishing. I love them. So yeah, here's the, another one. So yeah, I gotta go through all of this, this week, probably tomorrow, the sooner the better, because I know they're always under the gun, you know, getting the fabric done. Another thing that I wanna do, because <laughs> I'm hoping Kristen will help me hang this stuff, Kristen is a go-getter and she has such an eye for home decor, it'll knock your socks off. I, I did a video of her home, it must have been about a year and a half ago maybe. She changed her house from more of a like kind of purple and um, kind of glitzy. She changed it to farmhouse style which is right up my alley and she has some cool antiques and just she has such an eye anyways she will hang something that's big and heavy she knows how to do all that she's not afraid of it so i'm maybe if we have time she's only here for four days and one day her and i are driving friday her and i are driving down to craft gallery together we're going to do that then we're going to go out to lunch and then we're going to hit um some an antique store and a little country shop there and just make a day of it but anyway and then thursday we have the grandkids so it'll be wednesday or saturday her and i are going to hopefully if she's up for it <laughs> help me just decorate this one wall in one of our spare bedrooms so i bought this really cool mirror 
that's going to hang underneath and then I have these two antique corbels that I've had probably 10 years and then I have this cool antique piece of wood with chippy white paint on it that I, I'm going to put as a shelf on those corbels and I'm going to have the white part down so you can see it. So it'll be up fairly high and then up there I can put all kinds of, you know, cross stitch and tchotchkes and Debbie Tabot Americana figurines and stuff like that. It's going to be super beautiful. It's just a matter of hanging everything. Also, I want to paint these. Now, this is ah, going to be the inside. This is the outside that you'll see when you walk in the door. Look how cool and grungy that is. Well, I want to just kind of dry brush it. I don't want to paint it because I love all the chippy paint on there. But I want to go over it with just kind of uh, whitewash it a little bit, dry brush it. And then I want to seal it. I've got some sealer I can put on that so that the paint doesn't continue to chip. Okay? I mean, it's going to be hanging on the wall. It's not like it's just going to fall off. The more it's handled, the more paint will chip off. But anyways, the shelf is going to be magnificent. And then the mirror underneath and then the stuff on top. It's going to be cool. When I get it done, I'll share that with you. So I want to get those painted probably uh, Monday, obviously Monday or Tuesday or even Wednesday morning. I'll get those painted. And that is about it. Um, I'm doing this fairly quick and early in the day because in one hour we are going to meet at our friend's house because their daughter and new husband, uh, Mallory and Tim, are having a party at their house. It's a winter time, what is she calling it? Like a ski lodge, winter ski lodge party. And we're not going to have skis on, but <laughs> it's going to be outdoors. Today is sunny, so that is going to feel fabulous to be out in the sun. They, But it's cold out. It's cold. It's only going to be like 22 degrees. And it's outdoors. They're going to have those heat, those things that you see at like restaurants and stuff outdoors, those gas heat lamps, and then also some bonfires set up like here and there and everywhere. I'm gonna have a hat on, I'm gonna have my gloves on, I'm a coat, and I, my legs are gonna get cold, I guarantee that, but I'm gonna have boots and nice thick warm socks. So it's gonna be fun. Uh, she's gonna have like pulled pork and walking tacos, and she's made a couple different mixed drinks, but it's gonna be, midday i'm not going to be drinking so that is what we're doing today otherwise i would be stitching <laughs> or designing oh good news i got annabella's things all charted and i did the floss toss i've got the linen in so now uh, monday i will be sending them out to my model stitchers i'm stitching the biscore new and then there's two other pieces that are going to fit in 10 by 10 frames i'm stoked I'm so excited. These designs are adorable. So if you haven't signed up for Annabella's retreat in Lansing, Michigan for the what, last weekend of April, do it now. Do it now. I think there's still room. I'm not 100% sure, but check it out. I think that's all I had to share today. Thanks for joining me. And I feel like I'm leaving something out, but I don't know. It was a quick one. Anyways, thanks for joining me and we'll see you next week. Bye.